Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I am reporting to you from my messy home workshop. I am here because I have this truck out of the box motor. And I brought this truck home last fall with the intention of uh, making modifications over the winter time. Uh, had some things come up, didn't get to work on it a whole lot, but now we're trying to get back on schedule. So I thought uh, before I get too deep into this uh, video or series of videos, I wanted to show you kind of how the box motor truck is put together, kind of the history of it. Uh, it's a bit of an interesting design. Um, so as you know, the box motor was built in 1967. And I don't know the if this uh, you know, original frame here was the actual original truck, but I'm assuming it was. Um, when I started uh, going out to the railway in the late 90s, what I saw was this was this bed frame, uh, it's just angle iron from a bed frame, so it's got a springiness to it. Uh, it's a bit of a hardened steel. And that was the frame of the truck. Uh, it was just simply riding on this angle iron. And um, the angle iron was bowed, you know, here in the middle. And I thought, well, we should try to stiffen that up a little bit. Um, and this whole truck is kind of crude. I mean, you can see these are, I think these are like uh, uh, car coil springs maybe truck coil springs. I don't know, there's another spring over there that's probably the heavy side of the car where the transformer is. Uh, in any case, you know, it, it's worked. I mean, you can't argue with uh, functionality for that many years. So can't really knock that, but uh, it is a bit crude. So basically, you know, the car sits on this plate and there's a kingpin there, which is welded down to that plate. So this, this whole plate here is able to spring up and down. That's what gives the car its really nice ride. But I, I wanted to stiffen this up uh, so that we wouldn't break the angles because they, they were bowing pretty excessively uh, back then. So I made this frame that was about... Uh, I want to say around 2000, 2001, somewhere in there, I made this uh, tube frame, which is just, uh, it's inch and a half by quarter inch tube. And I more or less uh, just set the original frame on top of it and welded it to it. Um, that way I kind of had the overall dimensions and, and all that. And also there was, uh, so these pieces out here that is for a uh, cow catcher that goes on there as box motors uh, had a cow catcher on them. So that was, you know, part of the original frame. I wanted to keep that. So this truck design, this is basically the first truck that I ever modified. Uh, I had just more or less hadn't been going out to the railway for that long. So I was kind of new to the whole thing, uh, but this was, kind of the design that I came up with. It's not extremely prototypical, but it is quite functional. Uh, I have, like I said, I've been using it since, you know, 2000, 2001, and it's worked really well. Uh, basically, there, this, this is a pivot point here and here, and then we've got these die springs uh, here. So this whole arm will flex to make up for uh, our lovely perfect track that we have uh, and then uh, just off the shelf roller bearings for the bearings these wheels that are in here of course these are the original wheels these things are probably over a hundred years old these old spoked wheels uh, as you can see they've been looks like they've been welded on and uh, built up but there's still plenty of life left in them and so even though I'm modifying this truck right now I figured well let's try to keep it as original as possible so here it is uh, one thing I have done the when I modified this 
truck years ago, I put these uh, smaller die springs in, and these are, I think these are about 80 pounds per inch uh, compression rate on them, or compression strength, but they, they, they work, but I always said, if I ever take the truck out of there again, I'm going to beef those springs up, because uh, while the car did not derail often, if the track was bad enough, it would still, the wheel would still climb the rail, because there wasn't enough counterforce from the spring to keep that from happening, so I've added or replaced the springs with a heavier spring. These are, I think, about 200 pounds per inch, and I figure the car probably weighs somewhere between 1,600 and 1,800 pounds. And so if you figure, you know, 800 pounds per end, times, you know, I got four springs, four 200 pound springs, they should work out pretty well. Kind of maximize the uh, spring force with what we have for room to work with there. So the reason why this truck is back at the shop is uh, not just for the, the spring upgrade, but we are going to add a second motor to the box motor. So uh, only one end, only one truck of the box motor is a powered truck, and I want to have both trucks powered as that car, if the track is wet or any weeds on it or anything, uh, trying to go up the hill is just very hard for it to do. And as heavy as that car is, it has always needed a second motor. And so one of my long-term projects that I've always wanted to do was get a second motor under that particular car. Uh, however, we are not going to use just any motor. This is an experiment into AC traction. So here we have a uh, three phase, two horsepower motor, uh, it's 1800 RPM, and it's just a uh, kind of off the shelf industrial class B motor. I'm a little hesitant about doing this because, um, well, by my calculations, this motor has enough torque, just barely enough torque to move this car up the hill, just barely. Um, that's assuming that all my calculations are correct. Now there's some unknowns in my calculations. One of them is the grade. I don't know exactly what the grade is, and I don't know exactly how much the car weighs, and I don't know exactly how much uh, friction the uh, chains and bearings and all that stuff. I mean, I've got, you know, obviously there's kind of a standard number that you use, but is that really accurate? Um, so, in any case, uh, the car has obviously one DC motor on it right now. And that is a, I think it's a two, it's a one and a half or it's a two horsepower series wound DC motor, just like all the other equipment has on it. Uh, but as you know, a series wound motor will basically develop as much horsepower as you can feed it power to do so until it either burns up or you just run out of power uh, to keep building the you know the field bigger and bigger so uh, those motors are ideal for traction because our peak loads are very short and then when we're running on straight track it takes almost no power at all to move a rail car on a, on a flat straight track but we do have you know the big hills so I've got a VFD that is good for 10 horse, and I'm gonna use two of these motors. Now, what I wanted was a three horsepower motor because that has a lot more initial torque to it than this two, but this two horsepower motor, at the time when I bought the motor, they were pretty reasonably priced. And so I thought, you know what, we'll go with the two because in theory, one two horsepower motor should move the car. If I have two two horsepower motors, it'll more than move the car, no issue. Um, this particular motor I ended up getting for free. 
And that was because uh, when I bought it, it said that it was a good non-damaged motor, secondhand, yada yada. When it showed up, uh, the base plate was cracked and actually uh, the whole frame, the whole bottom of the frame was broke open. Uh, so I sent pictures to the seller and I said, you know, hey, this motor showed up. I don't think this damage could have happened in shipping. Maybe it did, but I'm not going to try to use this motor. Um, the guy graciously gave me my money back for it, said keep it. So I went ahead and uh, re-welded this base plate on here and I reset the end caps because uh, the motor was locked up when it showed up. Um, so now it, you know, spins, spins freely and it works just fine. So I figured, well, you know what? The price is right. If this experiment doesn't work, I'm really not out a whole lot. So we're going to try this and see if it works. Um, the brackets that I have uh, designed to allow me to put the motor on this truck I've got it made so that uh, a three horsepower motor will fit if I need to. Um, these are C-frame motors, so I'll be using this uh, face here as the mount. I'm not, not using this base plate. So if I need to uh, upsize to a three horsepower motor, then that's what we're going to do. So yeah, uh, I'll take you guys through the process of adding that motor to this truck in in a future video uh, just kind of wanted to show you how the truck works with its kind of uh, non-traditional suspension system and uh, just let you know that this is this is coming as much as i want to keep uh, dc traction on on everything that i have DC motors are getting harder and harder to find. They're getting more expensive because they're becoming scarcer. And with the price of VFDs now, if I can make that all work, uh, it, it'll be really, really cool. Uh, and kind of the way to go for the future because these motors here are available you know, all over the place. So, yeah, um, one of the big concerns I've had with the VFD is that our line power, of course, because it comes from Cantonary and our ground is, you know, rusty rail, uh, the power supply isn't always super stable. Uh, however, I did find a VFD that claims to be able to hold power for about 10 seconds, and it also will work down to 180 volts. So that one should work. It's a 10 horsepower. I'm gonna run two motors with the one VFD. I did buy an oversized VFD because I know that the Chinesium ones uh, tend to be a little bit, we'll just say they, they like to embellish their ratings a little bit. So I wanted something that was more than enough. Uh, and also with the VFD that I have, it does have a readily accessible front end uh, capacitor bank. So if I decide that I need to add more on the front end to allow it to hold up uh, through those power dips, then I can pretty easily do that. And I did test the VFD and yes, it does. If you uh, uh, turn the power off, it does hold up even with the motor under power for several seconds. So it might work, but uh, Anyways, yep, just wanted to talk to you a little bit about this project, uh, let you know what's coming for the future. I've been thinking about this for a long time, and the time has come to get it done. So stay tuned for a future view of how this is all going to go together and see if this experiment actually works. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and let me know about anything you want to see. And We'll see you next time.